I think that you convey meaning through music very non-specifically. So it's hard to describe the meaning that you are conveying in any other way besides the music itself. So I could play a piece of music and when it gets to this certain part, it's like, eh, it does the thing. And that thing, although everyone will like take it a little differently, it's a very direct thing. So however they take it, like there's meaningful emotional resonance that is specific and identifiable, but you could really only identify it f like it w with your intuitive feeling and you could do your best to describe it. But like the more you just Describe it with words. The less, um, the further you get from the, that actual meaning, I think. And sometimes meaning is really cryptic, and it might be very open to interpretation by the audience. Um, sometimes it's really straightforward. For me, it's almost always cryptic in some way, or at least conveyed in a way that's just not linear or easy to pick up on for. I guess you could say most people. Sometimes there's no meaning to convey and people will perceive meaning um, because they want to or because they're looking for it. Different things will resonate with them in different ways. Um, and I just, I think that music and art doesn't have to have meaning if you don't want it to. It can just be the sound, it can just be the presentation. For me, language is a chain of signifiers. So for something to be language, I'm a signifier, kind of there's slippage. A signifier represents another signifier that represents another signifier. So to be human is to be caught up in language. So even if I blush, um, if I'm in a coma and there's a rush of blood to my face, then that's not language as such, right? I mean, it's telling me something about biology, but it's communicating something. But when I'm conscious, a blush becomes a signifier maybe of embarrassment, which is a signifier of desire, which is, you know, a signifier of um, yeah, that where, you know, where I'm kind of attracted to a person or whatever it is. That's what language is. It's this um, movement in which one word represents another, represents another. And almost like, I mean, the analogy that's often used is like a dictionary. A dictionary is full of signifiers and every signifier points to another signifier. There's no point in the dictionary when it hits something real. It just, it's a play of these signifiers, but, but meaning arises out of this play of movements and differentiation. So that's what, that's what I think language is. It's a play of signifiers. Uh, if you take the assumption that music is a language, then songs are pretty interesting compared to just like a piece of instrumental music because yeah. in that sense, it's kind of a bilingual medium where you are conveying something. Let's just say the song is in English. You're saying something in English um, and also the music is saying something and they're saying something and they're each saying some two different things and in two different ways. Yeah. But through those two statements, you end up with this third meaning that is the meaning of the song. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that meaning emerges contingently um, based off of those other two meanings. It's like taking two sort of translucent um, sheets of something plastic and then you overlap them and you get the the new color and they're not separate from the other two they're, it's just a synthesis of those two but i think of the beatles but more so the beach boys maybe is a better example and abba who were the music and the words sometimes were not in continuity with each other so the beach boys i think were very very good at this is you would have maybe a really upbeat kind of like uh, music with very difficult words or very somber words. So music, I guess, that's a good example of music creating a, something else, that tension between the, the music and the words. And ABBA, and I wish I knew, could remember the names, but I think ABBA would do as well. You'd have this very upbeat kind of music and you'd get caught up in the music and then the words would kind of like bring you to somewhere else, somewhere like that was in antagonism with the music. Yeah, like, 
I think it's easy to over, um, sort of like over, uh, value the lyrics, um, in terms of their, what will the words mean when we're, when we're thinking about songs, because people really do like song lyrics and, but like, I think a big part of what makes a hook a hook is in the expression of the voice delivering it and the the way that it sounds like even if you don't know what the words mean in terms of what words mean because if i had a chorus that was like um frustrated 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 like the fun of that is that you take a sound and like twist it dun 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 dun, dun, dun. but it's like if you speak the language, you get this meta aspect, which is like, that's a weird way to say frustrated, frustrated, or frustrated, frustrated, like that might be like tickle you or bother you because you're used to hearing frustrated. But on a, just a sound level, there is just something to just like how like syllables sound. Yeah. I think anything, anything that can kind of be a signifier for something else. I think that's language. That's why Lacanians, they don't use the word. They don't use the word word and they don't use language. They use the word signifier so much because a signifier kind of avoids the problems with the using word. Because if I use word, you're thinking, oh, language is what I speak. But like technically, no language is whatever is where signification happens. Where mm. so that so yeah, so um signification kind of grasps a wider body of of human phenomena as you say from body language to blushing to symptoms are signifiers mm. you know if i clench my teeth um these are these have signification and when you think about meaning with words like you have uh the dairy farmer goes to sleep at 7 p.m it's pretty precise you're talking about a certain like you're talking about a human who does a certain thing at a measurable time and so you could say what that means is that this person whose occupation is to collect milk from animals specifically cows uh ends the day at a certain time that we know to be dark most parts of the year like there is like that level of agreed like uh, that meaning but i think there's other kinds of meaning and uh and those are like when you give somebody a look and they know that you're like uh, there for them or like you you reassure someone with a glance or you um, touch someone's arm in just this way that you know like they were a little nervous but but they like they really like you know care Whereas like someone else could touch and it would be like, they're just doing that because you think you're supposed to. And it's like, how could you describe the difference, you know, between those touches, but you know it. And it's like this, um, the way that it feels when you hear it with music, the way that you, that it feels when you hear it, you get like the, I know, I know. And culture plays a big part in what it's communicating to us too, I think, because like, music for like eastern middle eastern styles of of music and the in the the scales and modes they use and things like that um to them to to those other cultures um will communicate a certain feeling that us westerners will hear the same song and we'll get a totally different vibe from it like I and mean, this is a little technical with with music theory but like the the minor second, like if you have the root note and a half step up from that, to us Westerners, that can sound evil, can sound spooky, can sound scary, can sound maybe a little aggressive. Um, and then to other cultures, they're hearing happy, joyous, blissful kind of thing. And I, I, that's fascinating to me. Um, so when people say music is a universal language, like, I don't know. Uh, it might be a universal language, but we're not going to universally interpret it the same way. So I just I just don't think that we can remove um, music and or lyrics completely from some kind of visual context of some kind. Right.
Yeah. Which is a which is a third element into like it's a third sheet of clear paper. Yes. That, exactly. Th- yeah. And, and there's like you know, there's visual element and then there's like the socio political element. There's the yeah. s- psychoanalytic element of the person who's listening. Yeah, I was gonna go there. So yeah, there's there's all kinds of stuff. There's un- unavoidable contexts that that are factored in. Like yeah. what happened the day the first day you heard that song is gonna make it sound different than it would be if you heard it the day before it's gonna feel different um for the rest of your life you might not be able to 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 know how or why you wouldn't be able to ask me like what if you first heard dream theater when you were nine instead of when you were 10 like i wouldn't be able to tell you that the, how differently i'd feel about them but but i would it would be different for sure so there is a way of saying that yeah, information is to do with communication. Information just, you know, tells you something. There's a predator, there's mate, whatever it is, like animals communicate. Meaning arises when miscommunication comes into being. Meaning arises when other possibilities of interpretation arise that where there's not a one-to-one connection between the signifier and the signification. And probably music actually is a great example of this because, you know, there's, it's, there's, it's not communicating something directly. There's all of this communication and miscommunication and possibility. That's when you're, you're entering into language and meaning. Meaning is what's generated by the inability of language to nail its colors to the mast.